We may be a little late to the bird box challenge, but I do want to share a little bit about this build. Uh, it's kind of an interesting one that I've been seeing lately from Mene. And Mene, if you guys don't know, uh, he was a pro player during HGC and he played a variety of assassins. But uh, with the Heroes Hype tournament popping up now, we are seeing a wide variety of, of the pros coming back to get this giant prize pool. So what I was going to do this is why the pros play, is all the pros are coming back to win this prize pool. They've got their sponsored teams again. And so Mene has been playing uh, Falstead, and he plays a very unique build. It's like a really cool toolbox of abilities. So I, and because he's a bird, and because of the movie, we're going to be calling this the bird box build, or Mene's bird box build. Um, anyways, so to start off, he gets the wingman for the bribe. So... Falstad has a pretty unique bribe. He has Wingman. It makes it to where enemy minions killed near Falstad grant a stack of bribe. When he gets 20 stacks, he can bribe a minion, instantly defeating the minion, and increasing the damage of his W by 5%. So not only can he get bribe stacks just as fast as anyone else can, but when he's using his bribe, it increases the damage of his W. Not only that, by just taking this talent, you're also reducing the cooldown of your lightning rod as well. So instead of it being the 13 seconds that it says on the tooltip, it's actually 10 seconds. Now the cooldowns is going to continue on with this build as we go further. And this particular game was part of a prize tournament. So he's gonna play it and it's gonna be less of a stomp as a lot of the games you might see uh, where I'm showing off a build where it just kind of shows the power of this build. Instead, it's gonna be a little bit more calculated and slow. Um, but let me just say that you can use this build in Storm League and be just as effective. So I do want to show this build out for what it is in the, in the worst case scenario, which is this game, and what it could be uh, is so much more if you really want to push for it. So you do get a lot of damage with this build, um, but your damage is probably more oriented to giving value for your team. You're going to be clearing up camps, you're going to be double soaking lanes and just covering what your team needs while building up bribe stacks. And you're going to be using bribe stacks on your camps in the early game to pretty much just get the extra damage for your W. And then in the late game, you're going to be using your wingman to steal camps away from the enemies. So, right off the bat, we see uh, Washed Up, which is the team that they're playing, uh, that's on his team. They're just kind of playing safe, using the, the Falstad just to cover the the camps that are being picked up. But look at this aggression when he does decide to jump on someone, jumps into the barrel roll, gets himself a giant shield, and immediately does lightning rod while he's close to him. They have to use an escape or they won't or they're gonna be taking a ridiculous amount of damage. You see the way he engages is usually firing off a hammer ring, slowing them, jumping into him, and using a lightning rod while moving with them. He does sometimes fire off his hammer ring in the direction that enemies are running, uh, but he doesn't really need it that often. And takes him out. And he's back to just pushing. Level 4, he picks up Hammer Gains. Gives him the ability to take these one-on-one -on -one trades, as well as gives him sustain in case he takes a little bit of poke damage. He can just do that. Also allows him to do camps a little bit. So you see a bribe gets used on the bottom camp right there. Uh, it's just one stack that increases his damage by 5% and sped up the, the rate they did that camp. So it allows him to easily build pressure. He then uses his Z, or his Fly, uh, to get to mid lane and to soak. Allows him to double soak really well and keep up the soak for his team. Level 10, he's going to be picking up a boomerang, uh, which is going to allow him to wave clear much faster. And it's going to allow him to wave clear a little bit more efficiently as well. There, Because of the camp that he helped pick up at bottom lane, it applied enough pressure. He was able to take the first Dragonite for his team. And there's the boomerang pickup. On this particular map, you're going to see a lot of times the DK will take a step back so that he's not tanking both of the shots. But in this case, he did have to reposition because he didn't want to give free damage to the Sylvanas. So he's simply just using the flames to clear this up. And we're going to fast forward a little bit. I call this build a toolbox because it has a lot of everything you need. It has a lot of physical damage. It has a lot of spell damage. It has an engage. It has a disengage. It has a double soak. And it has a global. So if you're not really sure what your team needs, this is a really great toolbox, or in this case, a bird box. <clears throat> 
And so we see that drop. He got all of his mana regen while he was in there. And a quick double bribe to the enemy camp. They're able to get on it and apply a lot of pressure. The boom from the boomerang and the lightning rod can do a little bit of damage to the Joanna. Not too much. Enough to really threaten, but not too much after that. Look at that boomerang. So with boomerang, all you have to do is throw your hammering into the back line. You pop it while it's in between the back line. And then you do one auto attack to all of the minions. All of the backline minions. You just wipe the entire wave. So it allows him to double soak really easily. And he won't need to use flight to double soak. As we're approaching level 10. We're going to see this build start getting a little interesting. As he starts picking up the, uh, the gust. And this build does require gust. Or at least the way that Mene plays it. You would definitely not want to do this build without gust. And that's part of the toolbox. You add so much CC to the team. Uh... And so, once again, he just bribes one minion. He's just getting the value off of this. But if you're in a lower rank game, I would recommend, or a less coordinated game, I would recommend saving wingman for stealing camps or for grabbing camps that you can't get on your own. So, for example, if you were to take this camp on your own, you would want to uh, go through and get this camp with your bribe or steal their camp or steal their camp or get a neutral camp with your bribe. But I wouldn't worry too much about um, using the the wingman while your team's clearing. It's just that he's in a competitive team, a coordinated team. But he doesn't really need the bribe stacks for anything else. I was watching a few games. I was, In fact, I've been casting the Heroes Hype Tournament. Um, and he's been playing Falstad quite a bit. And he will... Uh, uses bribe to get double siege camp sometimes and one time he got a double siege camp and pretty much took all of the fort up top and then went and almost took a uh, a keep down bottom while the enemies were distracted pretty much gave his team the win so as we start approaching this we do see the gust is picked up it was used pretty early but it's got a rather low cooldown 60 seconds so you can use it in between fights and at the end of fights and um there are a lot of uses for it. There's actually a use that he was doing for a little bit in one of the games where he would... the uh, a Leoric would Entomb and then he would gust them into the Entomb so they would just get pushed in the entire time, which was pretty much like a stun. Once again, you see the Boomerang, a couple auto attacks, and then he gets out. As we're approaching level 13, this is where his build gets a little unique. You see, I've talked about the Falstad... Uh, builds before. I've talked about his auto attack builds using Season Marksman, and I've talked about his W builds where you take the W talents at 1, 4, and then on to 13 and go from there. But, uh, apologize. I had still on Skype from casting earlier. Um, but his 13 talent is a little bit different, and this is where this build gets pretty unique. Well, against a Joanna, it seems like it would be great to go with a Giant Killer, but he decides not to go with a Giant Killer. He ends up going with a talent that's not often picked up, and which is why I think this build is so fascinating and why I wanted to make a video about this build. Uh, he doesn't take the increased damage from each strike, from Thunder Strikes. He doesn't take Giant Killer, which would be great against the tanks. He ends up taking Flow Rider. And if we look at the stats right now, he's topping the hero damage already. And it's mainly just because when he gets into these team fights, in these 1v1s, he charges in with a, a, a Q, a W, or a Q and E, a W, and just locks on people. Uh, but when he gets further, I mean, you're going to notice the fact that he just has such high sustained damage in these fights. He picks up Flow Rider. What Flow Rider does is it says while Tailwind is active, Falset's basic abilities recharge 100% faster. Meaning you can cut all of the cooldowns in half. So Hammering's a 5 second cooldown, Lightning Rod's a 5 second cooldown, and Barrel Roll is a 7 second cooldown, give or take. And this allows you to clear waves even faster because you've got this cool these cooldowns that are essentially gone. And you can do very safe damage with your Ws. All you have to do is avoid damage. He uses a Gust to quickly grab the Dragon. Unfortunately, there is an Owl that stops him from grabbing it. He tries to go back for another one, but he needs to make sure the Tailwind's going, so that he does this bonus damage. As long as Tailwind's going, his damage is going to be extremely consistent. And Tailwind does break there as he takes a little bit of damage, but he is able to melt down the Leoric, get his cooldowns back up, and scare off the enemies. So once again, look at this fight. 
4,000 damage he did in that little fight right there. Really just blowing through their Leoric, blowing through the Joanna, and uh, a gust was used to make the enemies have a desperate uh, fight. And then when he's sieging, and this is where this build goes even further, is when he's sieging, he has such low cooldowns while he's sieging these structures because he's going to have his Tailwind going, and this build works really, really well for sieging. So if left alone, this is actually one of the scarier builds because you don't need to hit heroes or anything. You just need to not be taking damage. So we can see as this fight goes, watch him use these abilities. He gets the hammering off. He gets some uh, W's off. The W already got the cooldown lowered before the Tyrande got her damage off. But if that Tyrande wasn't there to trigger that, he would be melting down all of these structures. And then he just uses his hammering from level 4 to gain his life back. And on to the level 16. We're going to be seeing a talent that's picked up here and there um, for the auto attack build. But seeing it in this build, it actually synergizes much more. So level 16, we're going to be picking up the uh, Airy Gusts. And Airy Gusts is going to reduce the activation time for Tailwind from 6 to 3 seconds. So that activation time of, hey, we can't use this... Uh, we can't get this double cooldown for six seconds. It's now only going to be three, and your movement speed is going to be 25% nearly. Uh, I apologize. We're going to go back here and just rewind because I want to show you guys the power of good gusts because this game, he gets a lot of good gusts. And so we get the, the gusts um, talent that he picks up, increases his movement speed. Now watch this. He's calling out because he's saying, hey, I want assistance here, and he knows that there's going to be a fight here. So he tells his team, hey, let's go right here, and I'm going to gust them. Now, your average Falstad is going to go over here, and he's going to gust them into the team, right? He's going to be like, oh, I'll gust all the enemies into this team. But this is how people should be using gust when there's a team fight that you want to take. You should walk up, and you should gust them against a wall. You see, gust, they are stunned for the duration of the push. And it pushes them for something like two to two and a half seconds. And if you push them against a wall, they're stunned this entire duration. Did you see that stun? They got stunned for so long, they were able to walk up and simply just do a taunt. And the taunt leads to the team getting completely wiped out. So even though they were on the same talent tier for that fight, that gust set up so much. And then guess what? After that fight, he's at four wingman stacks. So they get all these kills and it's easy for Falstead to be like, you know what? I need a fountain. I'm going to grab a fountain. I'm going to bribe this so we have extra uh, camps that are going to be in here. And then guess what? I can Z into my team if I want, or I can double soak down here. It's all however he wants to do it. And in this case, he's just going to go for all the camps. With the reduced cooldowns, he can pick up camps very quickly too, as long as he doesn't take damage, which he did take a hit of damage there. But if he doesn't take damage, the cooldowns are so low, uh, he can pretty much just melt through camps. So they're able to get this double camp up top, double camp down bot, hold their experience advantage, all because of a gust. And these talons are great. I mean, he's able to just keep pushing really hard. He's got a ton of damage. And once again, if we were to take a peek now, Jaina's kind of popped up ahead a little bit, but that was a great clustered fight for Jaina. Pretty much best case scenario, uh, be a Jaina and have everyone pushed up against a wall and then taunted in place. So... It's kind of hard to come back from that. Uh, either way, we can see that he's using the global to his advantage. He's still pushing other lanes while his team's pushing down at bot lane. He's going to pressure top lane and force the enemies to react to both top and bot at the same time. Uh, again, just using the, the boomerang to make sure that he can blow up the waves. And he can use his W and his boomerang to speed up the clear of this with the cooldowns running. So... Uh, he can jump to either top or bot at any point if they want the dragon, but ultimately he's just trying to pressure. We're going to be approaching level 20, and again, while there used to be a lot of different picks for Falstad at 20 in the auto attack build, you tend to get Nexus Frenzy. Uh, in a lot of builds, you might see Epic Mount, just so that they can get around the battlefield more often. But Mene decides in this build he's going to be going a wind tunnel. And it allows you to keep pushing for four seconds. So the way he uses the gust, because he pushes people up against walls, Wind Tunnel turns into a four-second stun. 
and we're going to see it used to that efficiency very often. So he'll either use it to zone or he'll use it for a four second stun. We see him approaching this, still has the global whenever he needs it, uses boomerang, gets the cooldown reduction, and so his boomerangs back off cooldown again in case he wants to keep clearing this lane. He does have the bribe stacks once again, and he is approaching for a flank if he wants to flank. He sees the fights going on, and he could take the flank if he wants to. It's not looking like a great fight, so it looks like he kind of heads out a little bit. So right here, you can see that he positions in a flank. What that means is he tries to approach from the side where he can either gust them into a wall or he can gust them into the enemy team. But if he's not seeing a good gust, he simply just uses his damage with his low cooldowns to melt down people. So right there, he fires off a gust off to the side to see if he can just get the Hanzo out of the fight. It doesn't go over very well. But again, at this level of play, it's kind of hard. You need to take some risks. Uh, and in general, it looks like he decides that he just wants to head out. He does take the one-on-one, -on -one, and look at how much damage he does to a Hanzo off of just a W. The Hanzo did juke the Q, and if you would have landed the Q with the Boomerang, he likely could have just 1v1'd and blew apart the Hanzo right there. Looks like the enemies are going to take this Dragon, and it shouldn't be too difficult for this build to take out the Dragon. While, yes, the uh, Giant Killer would have been certainly better for the situation, Flowrider still gets a lot of value off of it in case he wants to, as the W's low cooldown is high single target damage. Boomerang does a lot of damage, but it looks like he might simply just back, head back in, decide if he wants to help clear, or he could go up top and start pressuring. Possibly even go mid and start pressuring if he wants to. Look at that damage. The damage out, the damage back, and the boom immediately hit it for a thousand damage. And again, once again, another thousand damage off of his Q. With the low cooldowns of his Tailwind, he'll be able to get another one off. So every time he's firing off a Q, it's a thousand damage. And then his W. He is pressuring mid lane right now. Remember that with the way he pressures mid lane, he can take this very quickly because of the amount of siege he has. But at the same time, if the enemies decide that they want to take a team fight, he can always just use Gust to push them into a wall. So we do see a fight coming in. He's just interrupting so that they don't get mounted up using that bonus movement speed where he's essentially mount speed walking around. And he goes to just simply pressure some top a little bit. All right, they go in for, remember the same play happened last time, but unfortunately he's not on the side over here. He does have his global so he can fly around. They get this same fight again. He just pushes them up against a wall. But in this case, he's going to use his bribe stacks to bribe everyone with the mage camp. And then he just melts down the mage camp. They can push with the mage camp, but remember, he can also pressure mid lane as he has a lot of single target siege damage and he has a lot of wave clear. So he's actually going to simply just pressure mid lane using the lowered cooldowns, using the boomerang, and he'll likely use a W onto this minion just to clear it. Oh, just another boomerang. Boomerang's just safe damage. They do have the 20 advantage, but it looks like they're not going to push it too heavily here. This build just has a little bit of everything. It really does. Single target damage with the W, AoE damage with the boomerang. Uh, CC disengages with the, the Mighty Gust, either really strong engages or disengages. He uses it more of an engage than a disengage in this particular game, but he still uses it as both depending on the games that are played. This Again, this was part of the Heroes Hype Premiere series. If you want to check that out, Europe will be playing again in two weeks on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And right here, look at this. So he sees that a team fight's going to start off. He repositions, he knows that there's the enemies are right about here, and he's saying, you know what, if I could just land one good gust here, we could end this game. So he goes in, and he fires off the gust. This gust is going to push everyone into this wall, and what's going to happen? They're going to be locked into this wall, keep getting pushed back in, you can see this Tyrande can't do anything about it, and she's just blown apart. Look at that team fight. A ridiculous amount of damage done. Look at the siege damage that he's also been doing. So, despite the fact that he's been in every team fight and he's dominating in those team fights, he's also uh, been the one that's pretty much just been setting up for his team. He's been 
applying so much pressure. Look at this bot lane that he was pushing before he jumped up top. Triple catapults are already there, and that is where they're going to lead to end off this game. So this is Mene's bird box build. I don't know what he calls it. I'm calling it the bird box build. Toolbox. Uh, and it is a fascinating build to get into. Either way, feel free to try out uh, this build on Falstad. It's really cool. I've never seen these particular talents picked in this order. And he's done it probably four games in Heroes hype now. And it has worked out flawlessly for him. Uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. One more time in the build, just so you guys can see. He picks up Wingman level 1, and he has 35 stacks. That means 55% extra damage. And then he goes into Hammer Gains to give himself some sustain and allow him to 1v1 people. Boomerang for the wave clear. Gust for the engages and disengages. He goes Flow Rider, which pulls this whole build together. So he gets those reduced cooldowns and airy gusts so that he can get the increased movement speed and the higher chance of keeping those cooldowns going in fights. Finally, he goes Wind Tunnel to make sure that the team fights go in his uh, direction. Anyways... That is essentially that build. Thank you guys so much for watching, and feel free to check out all of my other videos. And don't forget to check out the Heroes Hype uh, Premiere Series. It's the largest prize tournament in Heroes of the Storm since HEC, and it is bringing a lot of the pro players back into this game and bringing a... I'm not going to say it's bringing the pro scene back, but it's certainly helping. Uh, so either way, thank you guys so much for watching.